Process hollowing is a technique used by malware developers to try and evade antivirus detection. It involves spawning a legitimate process such as notepad.exe and then overwriting the program's code in memory with some attacking shellcode. In this video, I will explain and demonstrate this technique. Process hollowing makes heavy use of the Win32 API, mostly using functions defined in kernel32.dll. First, we create a process in a suspended state. Typically, we'd want to pick an inconspicuous target such as notepad.exe or svchost.exe. We can do this using the API function createProcess with the createSuspended flag set. Next, we need to find the address of the process environment block, which is a partially documented data structure used internally by the Windows operating system. We can use the zwQueryInformationProcess function to grab this using the process's handle. Once we have the address of the process environment block, we want to grab the base address of the image, which is at offset 0x10. We can do this using read process memory. Knowing the image's base address, we can carry on to read the first 64 bytes of the process, which make up the DOS header. This is another window structure which contains information about the specific executable. In this case, we want to read the E underscore LFA new field, which is at offset 0x3c. This gives us the address of the new exe header, which contains another field called address of entry point at offset 0x28. This is the value that we really are after. We can get all of these using the read process memory API function yet again. At this point, we know the memory address of the suspended process's entry point, which is where the program will continue execution from when we resume it. We can use the write process memory function to overwrite this memory area with whatever shellcode we please. Finally, we can call resume thread to resume the suspended process and our shellcode should be executed. To demonstrate, I wrote a short program in c -sharp, which implements this technique to spawn a notepad.exe instance and then hollow it out and replace the program code with shell code generated by the Metasploit framework, which should give us a reverse TCP shell. Here's the program. First, we use pinvoke to define all the structures and functions that we will be using from the Win32 API. There's a very helpful website called pinvoke.net, which has all this code ready for you, so you don't really have to program it all yourself. But once all of that is defined, it's really quite straightforward. We just call the Win32 API functions, as I described in the theory section of this video. We create a notepad.exe process that is suspended. We get the address of the process environment block. We extract the base image address. We extract the PE structure to find the entry point address. This is the shellcode generated by Metasploit. We're overriding the memory with this shellcode and then we're resuming the main thread. And as you can see, I'll build this and we'll run it and we should see a notepad.exe process running and yet we have a reverse shell. So I have Process Explorer here running from System Internal Suite. I have the built Process Hollowing uh, program. And I'll start a reverse shell listener here. And if we run it, we can see there's notepad.exe, but we have a reverse shell. And this is because the program code of notepad.exe was replaced with our shellcode giving us a reverse shell. Running this program as it is will trigger most antivirus solutions, including Microsoft Defender. But this is because of the interpreter shellcode being detected and not because of the process hollowing technique itself. We can address this issue a couple of ways. For example, we can use our own custom shellcode which is undetected, or more simply, we can encrypt the interpreter shellcode to get it past the signature scans. So, for example, here is a quick example of the same exact shellcode, the same exact program, except that I have XOR encoded it with the key 54. So each byte is XOR 54, and right before writing it into memory, I just XOR it again, so that is the original interpreter shellcode. I have Windows Defender enabled here, and I'll go ahead and build it. I'll start up the reverse listener, and We'll run it, and last time there was a Windows Defender notification here, this time there isn't. And if we check Kali, we see that we have the reverse shell. All we did was XOR encode the interpreter shellcode. It's not really a big change, but 
it's enough to get past antivirus, so... <laughs> Anyways, that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new. The code for this project will be available on my GitHub, and you can find the link to that down in the description below. Aside from that, I'll see you in the next one.